In this moment of inertia, we are going to examine one of the exciting new features of Inertia 2013, test procedures. Test procedure is a sequence of steps that performs a certain task that can be called over and over again from different tests. But before we go over that, we need to review some important terminology and concepts. An inertia test is a collection of one or more threads that run in parallel. A thread is simply a set of test steps to execute in order. There are two types of threads in inertia. The first type of thread is a control thread. A thro control thread is used to manipulate the set point of the specified control object. Only a control thread can use the mode switch step, which is used to perform a bumpless transfer during a test. A non-control thread does not directly link to an inertia control object, but can be linked to any writable channel in the system, including user variables and analog outputs. The threads in a test can be found in the test properties pane of the test editor under profile windows. Control threads are found under the heading control objects, and non-control threads are found under the heading additional threads. A test procedure is a set of steps that can be placed into a thread as a single step. When the test is executed, that single step is replaced with the steps in the procedure. Since a procedure is added as a step to a thread, procedures must be of one of the two thread types. Control procedures are written for a specific control object and care must be used if that procedure is going to be used by other control threads. For example, consider a procedure that has been written for a dynamometer and includes a step that ramps its set point to 500 RPM. If this procedure is then used in a control thread for an actuator, instead of ramping to 500 RPM, it would attempt to ramp to a load of 500 pounds. Additionally, it is important to consider the initial mode for a control procedure as it must match the currently active mode of the thread when it is called. Now that we've got all that out of the way, let's look at actually creating a procedure. There are two main ways to create a procedure. The first way is to select File, New Procedure, at which point you will be prompted to select the type of procedure you wish to create. If you select Control Object, you will be prompted to select the control object you wish to use. If you wish to instead create a procedure for a thread, select Thread, then give your thread a name, and select an output variable. The step number variable is not used when creating procedures. The second way to create a test procedure is to select steps in your test, right click on them and select new procedure from steps. Enter a file name, click OK, and there you go. You have replaced those steps with a new procedure. When editing your procedure, you have access to most of the features that are normally available when editing a test. You cannot configure logging or alarms inside of a procedure. You can create local variables and rendezvous. When in editing steps in your procedure, you can use constants, variables, and local variables as you normally would. The mode switch step may only be used when editing a procedure for a control thread. If used in a procedure for a non-control thread, you will encounter an error when you attempt to run a test containing that procedure. You may also call other procedures inside of your procedure, as long as doing so does not create a circular reference. Sorry, but for now inertia tests and procedures do not support recursion. Here I have created an example procedure for a control thread that uses constants, variables, mode switches, local variables, and rendezvous so that we can see what happens to these when you add your procedure to a thread. 
Here's an example test I created with a single control thread. We will add our example procedure and double click to edit the parameters of that procedure call. Variables are automatically linked to the specified channel in the system definition. The only time the link will not be created is when the channel has been removed or renamed or if you're using the procedure in a different system def definition than the one for which it was created. That's not a problem because you can always map it to another channel or to a local variable or even a constant value. Local variables will not initially be linked because local variables are only scoped within a test so the local variables you create in your procedure were merely placeholders. These two can be mapped to variables or constants or even to other local variables scoped within your test. The same thing happens with rendezvous and you must choose a rendezvous that exists within your test. It is important that you give local variables and rendezvous in your procedure descriptive names so that the purpose of each can be clearly understood when editing the procedure call. Using local variables is a great way to pass, const, pass constant or even variable values to your procedure from the calling test. Modes are a little trickier. When a procedure containing a mode switch is added to a test thread, inertia attempts to match the mode by name and by feedback units. If an exact match is not found, it is up to you to link the mode in the procedure to an actual mode available for the control object. Great care must be used when selecting a new mode so that you do not get into the situation that was described earlier where the procedure sets the set point to a value that is not appropriate for the control object. It should also be noted that procedures for control objects require you to specify the starting mode for the procedure. Inertia attempts to match this like any other mode switch. If you attempt to run a test that contains a procedure and the starting mode specified in the procedure step does not match the current mode, you will receive an error. You must then go back in the test editor and resolve the issue. As time goes by, you may need to make changes to a procedure. One of the advantages of procedures is that you do not have to then go and modify all the tests that call that procedure. The exception to this is if you change the parameters sufficiently so that inertia cannot automatically resolve the changes. This includes adding or deleting local variables, adding or deleting rendezvous, but does not include adding or removing mode switches or variable calls. If these changes occur and you attempt to run a test that calls this procedure, you will get an error and you must then go and open the test in the test editor and resolve the issues. So those are the basics of test procedures in Inertia 2013. I hope you found this video helpful and that it will make you more productive in using inertia. I hope you will join me next time for another Moment of Inertia.